Hearts of Fire and The Nanny won't be seen tonight. Please stay tuned for this special presentation. So here we are, it's December the 5th of the year 2015. Hard to believe that 20 years ago today, my life was greatly changed. All because of one major family purchase that occurred that day. You see, Tuesday, December 5th, 1995, my dad purchased a Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT desktop computer from the newly opened Best Buy in Greensboro and brought it on home and it was quite an experience. Um, because I had had prior exposure to a computer before also in 1995 thanks to my aunt and her Gateway 2000 I, um, I was dying to go with my dad to pick up that computer with him and the in his white 1995 Honda Accord V6 unfortunately I was very 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 sick that day um, with a very bad stomach bug and it was not a pleasant experience um, well stomach bugs aren't supposed to be pleasant <laughs> but I was in this very very room that evening just lying here looking down here watching the TV watching the Flintstones on TV. It was um, a much different TV back then. By the way, this is my dad's room. <laughs> it was a, and it was back then too, and it was a much different TV back then, obviously. I believe it was like a 20-inch um, Zenith um, television set. And uh, I was going to simulate the experience with this modern-day television that he has in here now with a this DVD box set of the Flintstones but for some reason his DVD player does not like these DVDs so that was not able to happen so I'm sorry to say so um, you know um, for those of you who have been following me on my Facebook page and my previous videos um, know, I probably know that I've been going through quite a conundrum trying to figure out what to do for the 20th anniversary of this um, major event in my life. I have to do something. Um, well, I think, well, today at work I got to thinking, um, you know, a lot of the atmosphere and conditions are quite similar to um, how it was 20 years ago today. Um, for and there's and for one major reason, um, if you can tell by my voice, I don't sound as um, clear as usual. Um, I'm actually coming off of a cold, so um, just like 20 years ago today, I am sick. <laughs> it's not a stomach bug this time, thankfully, but it is still a sickness. So I got to thinking. Um, as you know, back in April of 2013, thanks to a good friend of mine, I was able to acquire an identical Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT that um, is completely identical to our original. Now, 
a dream come true would would be to have the very very original Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT that we had tw 20 years ago but unfortunately I just don't see that ever happening um, even if I did ask my dad about it which I think I will someday soon I'm gonna make it a, a, a I'm gonna make it a goal by um, by Christmas to make that a reality but I imagine that the results will not be to my pleasing but I digress. Um, I got to thinking, you know, I've got that Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT that's so identical to the original. Why not simulate what was going on here 20 years ago today? 20 years ago tonight, to be exact. So I took my Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT with its monitor, keyboard, mouse, and microphone and all the cables and I took it all into the dining room where the original 822 was and I thought we would um, go in there set it up on the dining room table now we no longer have the desk that housed the original one um, anymore but I figured you know setting it up on the dining room table would be um, a good consolation so Let's go into the dining room and s set up our new Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. Okay, I um, we are now in the dining room of my house. Um, originally, the um, Packard Bell was, and its desk obviously, was located right here, where this, um, where my grandmother's old. Um, 1971 Sears Roebuck stereo console lives right now. It was right here, right here. And um, it's um, obviously too small today to, to house the entire Packard Bell computer monitor and all those other goodies. So um, I turned the dining room table around, which coincidentally had to be turned around 20 years ago to fit all this in here, and we're going to set it up right here on the, t on the dining room table tonight. Okay, so we'll start off with the, the uh, man of the hour himself, the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. Again, this is not the original from 20 years ago. This is the one I got back in 2013. Okay, we're going to set it up right here. Let's, uh, let's get the camera off the tripod real quick and get a better look at the computer. This is how it stands today. Here's the Nick, if you recall, from two and a half years ago, the day I got this, it was perched on the edge of my desk in my bedroom and it, the weight distribution was a little bit off and it came crashing down onto the floor and landed on a 1999 era Hewlett Packard power supply. The power supply, the, the computer as you can see survived completely intact, um, not, not counting these two little minor nicks. Power supply, on the other hand, was toast. It was just demolished. <laughs> it was hilarious. But anyway, here's the original spec sticker. We've got a 100 megahertz Pentium processor. Originally had a 1.2 gigabyte hard drive, 16 megabytes of RAM, one megabyte of video memory, upgradable to two megabytes. Quad speed CD-ROM drive now has a 52 speed Sony drive and designed for Windows 95 and includes Packard Bells and Navigator. Come over to the back. There's the motherboard and all its ports. There's the um, CF card I'm using in it now. Um, as you know, I replaced the hard drive and I'm now using um, just um, flash storage on here because it's a lot more faster and a lot more reliable. And this expansion slot here allows me to um, hot swap cards and back them up into disk images a lot easier. This is actually a brand new card I got the other week that I kind of bought as a birthday present for this computer. 
As a matter of fact, I forgot to mention something kind of interesting about all this um, that we're doing tonight. I I restored this from the Packard Bell Master CD um, about an hour ago. And so when we turn this on in a few moments, it'll be just like booting it up straight from the factory. It's going to be really cool, folks. Really, really cool. All right, let's put it back on the tripod. Hopefully it doesn't fall. I really need a new tripod, folks. It's it's really not funny. <laughs> okay, get a good view there. All right. Next up, if I can get to it, that is the uh, monitor. This monitor at Value Village back in um, 2011. This is an original 14-inch Packard Bell CRT with the built-in speakers. Has a perfect picture on it. The original um, Packard Bell monitor that came with our original Legend 822 CDT, believe it or not, died sometime around 1998. So we had to go to a computer shop in town and buy a used um, Gateway 2000 monitor of all things. And that's what it used for the rest of its life, or at least as long as we had it. <coughs> Excuse me. Go ahead and connect our VGA while I'm back here. I really can't go ahead and connect speakers, but I really can't stress how how much different it was to buy a computer 20 years ago. Because back then all this stuff was just brand new and exciting. Think of it like the television revolution in the 1950s when people were first buying television sets and you could only get three channels and it was all in black and white. By the way, this is um, this is the original um, mouse pad that came with our original Legend 822 CDT. Well, this isn't the original original. I bought this off eBay a couple years ago, but this is the exact same thing. I'll be using that over here. Yeah, it, a computer back then, in 1995, was a very, very major investment. As a matter of fact, this whole setup right here wound up costing about $3,000 when all was said and done. That included the computer, the monitor, and the printer, which, by the way, was an old um, Lexmark... Um, Windjet, I, I believe it was. I'm probably wrong. It had the word win in it somewhere. And, you know, back then, you just didn't go into, um, it's not like it is today, where you go into Best Buy and find your, the Surface Pro you want, or the, um, this is the mouse, by the way. You can find the Surface Pro you want or the Chromebook you want, point at it and say, Thought work! And then, uh, and then you're on your merry way. By the way, big thanks to Jay Wakefield for um, that little saying there. <laughs> I give him all the credit for that. Back then, again, I can't stress this as enough, it was, an, it was a major investment. It was like, I'm surprised... When my dad set, set this up 20 years ago tonight, we didn't have a full-fledged ribbon-cutting ceremony. It was that big a deal. Okay, let's see what we got. We got a mouse, keyboard, monitor, and speakers hooked up. Now let's hook up the microphone. This is the only piece, this is the only surviving piece of the original... Legend 822 CDT system from 20 years ago that we have left, the microphone. When we gave it away, when we gave the computer away back in 2000, we kept the microphone, and this is it right here. So, we'll set it up right here in between the monitor and the computer. 
plug it on in into the microphone input on the sound card. Okay. I think what we need to do now is hook us up some power. Got hooked up a temporary um, power strip over there to handle everything. This is the uh, power cord for the speakers. Reach. Yeah, it'll, it'll reach. Here it goes. This. By the way, this is this is not permanently staying in here. <laughs> this is just for tonight, for just for the special occasion. wise There, okay, plug it into plug the up, plug the brick into the power strip. We go over the speakers pop for a second there, that's good. Now monitor and computer need their power. Because electricity is always a good thing for a computer to have. Pretty much any IT professional will recommend that. Okay, hope this will reach. And yes, it will. And plug this in. All right, we're getting close to the promised land here, folks. Let's go. All that's left is to plug the monitor in. Folks, I think we're about ready for our official smoke test. Okay, everything's looking good on the camera. This is exciting, folks. 20 years, 20 years and we're back over here. All right. I'm going to turn the monitor on. Stand by. All right, three, two, one, smoke test. Listen to that baby purr. All right, we're getting a power on cell test. Oh, this is embarrassing. Something is not right with the bootloader. Completely frozen. Oh, good grief. Alright, let's try that again. Don't need any of this crap. This may be a big bummer. That noise is our coffee maker, don't worry. It's not the computer about to blow up. You know, I was having trouble with this CF card earlier in another computer. We may have a faulty card here, folks, so... Uh, this is a sadness, folks. <laughs> we got a faulty CF card. Breaks my heart. Well, I guess I'll be back later, folks. Once I figure this crap out. Well, unfortunately, folks, I um, 
really have no way to salvage um, the CF card and the installation um, that lives on it. So I've had to switch back to the um, CF card I was using on here, which was last formatted about a year and three months ago, I believe. So it's a pretty old installation. We're not going to get to go through the Packard Bell um, setup and all that and the putting in the Windows 95 product key that unfortunately is just not going to be possible tonight especially since I'm kind of on a tight schedule so we're just going to have to make do folks so let's do this again Putting into Windows 95. This was also my first experience with Windows 95 because, um, as I mentioned, lovely music. As I mentioned, um, Well, unfortunately, folks, there's really no way I can salvage um, the CF card or the Windows installation that lives on it. So I had to put the old CF card back into the computer, which has the um, installation that I've been using on here for well over a year now. So we're not going to be able to see the Packard Bell um, welcome screen where it says we're sure you it will we will meet your computing needs in the Windows 95 COA key screen. So I really, I really wanted to do that, folks, but I don't have another CF card to do this on, and I'm really on a tight schedule here, so we're just going to have to make do. So um, let's just go ahead and fire it up anyway. We'll, we'll still have fun tonight. Don't worry. At least we'll have stuff on here already to use. <laughs> we have good old Windows 95. Um, believe it or not, um, Packer Bell Legend 822 CDT was um, my first experience with Windows 95. That is beautiful music right there. Um, you see, um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the Gateway 2000 that my aunt had was running Windows for Workgroups 3.11, and as you know, it was an entirely different interface. So, um, when we first started this computer up 20 years ago tonight, um, it really was a new experience um, because Windows 95, start me up, <laughs> Brian Eno, and start menu, all that good stuff. <laughs> so, um, and believe it or not, actually, um, because I was I was kind of obsessed with my aunt's Gateway 2000, I actually wanted my dad to install Windows 3.1 on this computer. Thankfully, my dad knew that was a not a good idea, and he did not ever do that. Besides, that probably would have been one. It would have been a waste of money, and two, it probably would have broken so many things. It would probably make us cry. <laughs> so. Um, Let's go ahead and sit down and play around with our new Packard Bell. Well, kind of new, I guess. <laughs> That's the um, Snoopy Christmas wallpaper I've been using for my nostalgic Christmas videos this past week. Um, first thing we saw, obviously, when we first turned this computer on 20 years ago was this. Welcome from Packard Bell. 
we offer you two computing environments to choose from, Packard Bell's Navigator or Microsoft Windows. You may also begin by taking a quick lesson on using the mouse. And yes, back then we did not know, or, well, I kind of did, but we really didn't know the ins and outs of what a mouse was, so I always joke about the mouse lesson that comes up on Packard Bell Navigator, but it really was an important thing to have. <laughs> Cause I remember um, YouTube user Elmol3 um, did a video about the mouse lesson here on Packard Bell Navigator, um, and he did a very good um, interpretation of what it really meant. How you know a lot of people who had never used a computer um, wouldn't know what a mouse was, and the same went from people who were coming from computers from the 80s who were used to command line interfaces who who just used keyboard to type on and no, and mice didn't even exist then well they, they did but not everyone had them back then okay all the good stuff here ski free probably one of the first things we ever played on here wouldn't surprise me whoa <laughs> was actually kind of cool. Alright, let's see if we can get you-know-who to make an appearance. I don't kill myself first doing this. <laughs> And there he is. That thing used to scare the living crap out of me as a child. And we'll look at some more of this and and, and even take a look at a, at a game or two after these messages. A friend of mine said I should try America Online. So I did. I've gotten help with my golf swing, planned my next vacation. I even get stock price updates every 15 minutes. America Online puts over a hundred newspapers and magazines right on my screen. I've got worldwide email, point-and-click internet access, and a great web browser. Plus, new features keep getting added. Call the toll-free number and you'll receive your free startup kit in 15 free hours to look around. It's worth a try. You'll see. There's a new pet. Ch -ch -ch Chia. Chia pet. The pottery that grows. It's fun and easy. Soak your chia. Spread the seeds. Keep it watered and watch it grow. And now grow a whole collection of fun with Chia teddy bears. Puppies, kittens, rams, bulls. There's even a Chia tree to keep your pets company. Chia Pets and Trees, the pottery that grows. The Chia Pet and Chia Tree are available at Kmart, Rite Aid, Ames, and Woolworth. Makes a great gift. Get a Game Gear, the full-color portable with over 150 games, like the new Echo, Mortal 2, and Sonic Triple Trouble. Dig up! And we are back. Camera adjusted again. Don't want to get too rambunctious with this tripod. I don't even know how it's still surviving. <laughs> oh, we got a... Oh, we got a um, quick tip for Navigator. Macromind Action offers templates to help you build great looking presentations quickly. I believe that was a um, kind of an off-brand version of um, Microsoft's PowerPoint, if I remember correctly. Okay, um, going to the info room. Um, we could take the lesson on using the mouse, but 
don't believe we have I have this oh wait a minute I do let's take a lesson on using the mouse folks yeah, hit up you need the uh, CD for Packard Bell Navigator in order to take the lesson on using the mouse and the other tutorials that are included. So, go over here. Surreal using this. It, it, it feels really surreal sitting down here with the Sorry about that. Um, here we are in the um, Packer Bell Navigator tutorial gallery. Um, got a lot of tutorials to choose from. Getting started, service, info room, home electronics, software, software room, and the fast media. But tonight we're only going to focus on the mouse. Because that's what we all came here for, right? Hi, and welcome to a brief lesson on using your mouse. Now before we begin, remember you can always use your keys on your keyboard to move around. To return to where you were originally, just press the escape key. And to move ahead, press the enter key. If you need help at any time, just press the question mark key. Now we'll introduce you to your mouse and answer some basic questions. Why should I use a mouse? How do I use it? And how do I use the mouse when I'm working with text? To begin with, your mouse is a tool to let your computer know what you want it to do. You use the mouse to point, click, and drag. Go ahead, try moving the mouse. Whoop. Rest your palm on the round part of the mouse and move it around on the pad. Oh my now you gosh, can see I'm how the arrow it. on the screen mirrors the mouse movement. Now move the <coughs> mouse so the pointer goes off the screen. Uh, if you say so. To get the pointer back, just move the mouse a bit until it appears on your screen again. Now let's practice pointing. Try to move the mouse so the arrow moves over the blue gear. You click on an object by pressing and quickly releasing the left mouse button while the pointer is over that object. Practice by clicking on the red gear. We actually um, were able to identify the name of the guy that does these tutorials this past spring, but now I forgot his name. I'll have to look it up. And I'll put it in the annotations once I find out. When you out. click on an object, it highlights to show you that it's selected and it's ready for the next action you choose. Click on the red gear again to de-highlight or deselect it. Now use the mouse button to click on the forward button on the screen. Let's try double clicking the mouse by quickly pressing the left mouse button twice. Try it on the green gear. It may take a little practice to get it just right. You call me stupid? Okay, let me try this again. Okay, I don't know what I did wrong the first time. The next time. thing you need to know is dragging with the mouse. You drag an object by pointing to it and holding down the left mouse button while you move the mouse. Practice dragging the gears into place on the blueprint using the mouse. Okie dokie. When you're working with text, you can use your mouse to tell the software where you want to work. Move the pointer so it's over the word better in the text on the screen. Text says, if a piston can make a better mouse trap, the world will beat a road path to, to his or her, her door. Right. Notice how the pointer looks like the letter I. This shows you where you'll begin working. You can use your mouse to select a word to remove it. Just move the cursor over the word road and double click the left mouse button. Okay. Notice the word is highlighted. Now press the delete or backspace key to remove the word road. Ouch, that hurt. <laughs> you can also highlight a whole line or paragraph. Start at the beginning of what you want to highlight. Hold the left mouse button down while moving the mouse over the first line. 
Then use your mouse to move the cursor down one line at a time to cover the area you want to highlight. Try it on the sentence on screen. Normally, just like with words, if you press the Enter or Delete keys, you erase whatever is highlighted. Let's keep going through. Let's try changing the letters in a word using the mouse and keyboard. Position the cursor before the O in Piston and click the left mouse button. Then press and release the backspace key three times to delete the letters T, S, and I. Why am I taking orders from him? Oh, that's right. I'm simple. Now type E, R, and S to spell person. Okay, we get it. You're working. Oh, wow, it must have listened to me. <laughs> Thanks for learning how to use the mouse to point, click, double click and drag, and to edit text. These skills will come in handy whenever you use your computer. Now, to go over any part of this tutorial and practice using your mouse, just click on a topic. Or you can click on the gallery wall button in the upper right area of the control panel to return to the gallery wall. Notice that it never mentioned um, anything about the scroll wheel on the mouse because notice there is none. You see, this was back before um, mice had the scroll wheel in the middle of everything here. That didn't come around until a couple of years later. But this, that whole tutorial seems funny and juvenile nowadays, but as I said before, 20 years ago, a lot of people really did need this because computers were basically a new fangled thing in the home that many people were not used to and perhaps maybe even afraid of. So let's head out of Navigator and back into Windows and let's play a game. Now I want to keep things a little simple here. I want to play games that we only could have had access to the day we got this computer, which at the time were um, only the games that came with the software bundle in here. Um, uh, the next day after we got this all set up, um, December the 6th, uh, my dad actually purchased our first three computer games for the system. Um, at Sam's Club, and they were 3D Ultra Pinball and two Living Books games, which were um, just Grandma and Me, which I'd played previously on my Ants Gateway 2000, and um, the Berenstain Bears get in a fight. But like I said, that's not going to happen until tomorrow, so we're going to have to stick with what we had that day. I'm not, and I'm not even sure if I, if I even played any of these games that night because, like I said, I was pretty sick. We've seen my first encyclopedia quite a bit, so let's check out one we don't see a whole lot. The kid story games, complete with that annoying 90s kid on the skateboard. You may want to cover your ears, folks. This might not be pretty. Programs, multimedia applications, <coughs> excuse me, folks. And we'll play a little bit of The Pirate Who Wouldn't Wash, one of my all-time favorites because I was an immature six-year-old and I thought things that were smelly were funny.
drums, folks. Cover your ears. Hey! Hi there! Welcome to Storytime with our series of animated books. If you want the book read to you, you'll have to click on this picture. To play within the book, you'll have to click on this. And for all the surprises, click on this one. To move from page to page, click on these buttons. And when you're finished, click on this. It's easy, isn't it? Go on, you have a go. Click on a button. Alrighty. <coughs> oh, we deserve that. Alright, we'll do click and play, not to be confused with the um, children's video game maker software that Jay Wakefield um, is quite fond of. Oh yeah, I'm sure this was on the New York best time or, 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 or in the New York Times bestseller list back in 1995. And I'm losing my voice, folks. <coughs> Pongo was a pirate on the last chance. Not to be confused with one of the main characters from 101 Dalmatians. Blacktooth was the captain, and he sailed the sea hunting the great treasure ships. Alright, just like the Living Books games from that you've seen many times, you just mainly click around and click on random click points to see funny stuff happen. And you can click these arrows to go from page to page. So we'll click on Pongo. Hi, I'm Pongo. Oh, that wasn't nice. <laughs> No way, Jose! It stinks up there! Who's Jose? I've never met anyone named Jose. You smell... It sounds like an incomplete sentence. It sounds like he was going to say something after that. Even my mouth hole smells sweeter! <coughs> oh, he didn't fall in the water. What a rip-off. Alright, next page. Pongo hated water. He hated soap even more. He never washed himself or his clothes. The other pirates were not happy about Pongo. Whoa, whoa, hey! Whoa, whoa, hey! Whoa, whoa, hey! That's one of those click points that's funny to click multiple times in a row for some reason. <laughs> hey, he's cleaning the HUD there. You're breaking the fourth wall, man. Don't do that. It's not a pretty thing to do. Now he fell in the water. There we go. So sounds like me when um, I eat too much spaghetti, which is actually delicious, and it's definitely worth it. <laughs> Bang. Hmm. Child-friendly gun there. Was that you? Or is Pongo around? Ah, oh, fart joke. Nice. <laughs> Stay classy, America. Stay classy. What? All right, one more page. I don't want to be here all night with this. That 
stuff looks disgusting. Pongo visited the cook, who could not smell a thing. Even the weevils in the crackers could not stand Pongo's smell. Hate it when my hat does that. Hey, wait a minute. I don't wear hats. Ugh. I don't know what that is, but it looks sickening. Running gag in this game must be people and animals falling off the ship. Hey, look, a pig. Okay, you know what? Let's go. Let's go ahead and um, call the night of this game. Get out of here before he starts talking. Okay. Do we have time for anything else, I wonder? It is a church night, and I do need to get up early tomorrow morning. So, I don't know. Um, uh, should I end the video here, or... Should we um, continue this Monday? The reason I want to continue this Monday is <coughs> two days after um, all of this happened in 1995, my sickness got to the point where I had to go to the doctor. And, um, and I remember that day quite well. Um, just like the day we bought this computer, it was raining like crazy in town. And I remember us on the way home stopping at um, Revco. Remember that drugstore from back in the day? It, it eventually became um, CVS Pharmacy in 1997, but I digress. Um, anyway, we went to Revco and I actually bought a, a box of Domino's. Not the pizza, the actual little um, toy Domino's. And I remember trying to play with them, and I never could get them to work right because I didn't know what, to, how the heck you're supposed to play with dominoes, and I couldn't get them to fall down in a row like you see on TV. But yeah, um, and I remember coming home, and believe it or not, I um, I was actually kind of scared to use this computer when we first got it for those first couple of days. Because I was afraid if I was going to use this by myself, my dad would get mad at me. But my dad actually told me, Billy, um, you can use this computer whenever you like. And that blew my mind, folks. It blew my mind. I was six years old, and I had access to an entire computer system. And that was amazing. That was absolutely... <coughs> and with my voice again, folks... Um, it was just absolutely amazing. And from that day on, this computer became my life. And so it would probably seem rather appropriate that we continue this video two days from now. Um, for when, um, for when I'm, um, celebrating the 20th anniversary of when I was granted full access to this system. In fact, then we'll be able to play a couple of the games I got um, the day before that. So, um, yeah, I think we should go ahead and do that. So, we'll con we will continue the video Monday night. So, we will see you then. Actually, I just want to get one more good view of the, co of the computer set up like this because um, Monday when we do this, I'm going to have to have this back in my bedroom, so I want to get one more good view of this on camera while we still can. Oh uh, yeah, look at that. My voice sounds really macho tonight. Very manly. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. See you Monday, folks. With all the O's and delicious SpaghettiOs pasta, your mouth leads the mambo.
oh, 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 SpaghettiOs. And your whole world goes out of control. All those tasty O's means a mouthful of fun. Oh, 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 oh. SpaghettiOs! SpaghettiOs celebrates Toy Story Activity Center CD-ROM with magic scenes that appear when you go outside. You can collect all six under specially marked labels. Presenting a way to make life a lot simpler. The Clapper. Turn on a lamp. Turn on the music. Turn off the TV. Use it anywhere you need a helping hand. Simple. Plug it in and insert the plug from just about anything. Simple. Clap on. Clap off. Clap on. Clap off. The Clapper. Give it a big hand. The Clapper is available at participating Ace True Value Service Star Drug Stores and Discount Department Stores. And welcome back. Um, it, two days have now passed since the last part of this video. I'm still a little bit sick, as you can probably tell, but thankfully not as um, sick. Got the um, Packer Bell Legend 822 CDT back in my bedroom. Um, by the way, it's December the 7th now. Um, today marks 20 years since my dad told me that I could use this computer whenever I wanted. And 20 years later, I'm still doing it. <laughs> so, um, and as usual, my mind draws a blank. Um, in this part of the video, we're going to play a few more computer games, um, namely some games that um, we got the day after the Packard Bell arrived. Um, that might, And there were three of them. I got them right over here. Um, I wonder if I'll get it on the first try. Yep. 3D Ultra Pinball from Sierra. Just Grandma and Me bought from Living Books. And the Berenstain Bears get in a fight also from Living Books. And we are going to um, set up the tripod and we're going to play a few of these games. All right, got tripod set up. Um, first I think we'll give um, 3D Ultra Pinball a whirl. I haven't played this game in a while. It is one of my favorites. Just simple and fun. It's a classic. We can skip through that. Now I wonder if we'll get the um, vi the graphics glitch that we saw that one time. If you recall. Um, I tried playing this about a year and a half ago, and I've had this happen before. Um, the graphics on the tables of this game will glitch out and look all garbled. And I contributed it to an issue with um, Windows 95 OSR2. However, we're now running on Windows 95 RTM, the original one, where I don't think I've ever had that problem before, so... We'll play the colony level. And no graphics glitch, just as I expected. Colony table activated. To start bonus events, hit the glider twice. Good luck. Alright, let's do this. Used to love doing this when I was a kid with this game, catching the ball right there.
Hey, by the way, I apologize for the lack of um, nostalgic Christmas videos the last few days. Um, I've been putting all my video making efforts into this particular video because, well, I want it to be really special for you folks. And nostalgic Christmas will resume after this is uploaded. Okay, we just lost the first ball. Or not. You know what, I, I'm even going to go as far as to say is that this game is way better than 3D um, Space Cadet Pinball. Well, that's a good little game. It's, uh, I guess I associate it more with Windows XP than Windows 95 because Windows XP was where I played it the most on. Not doing too good with this tonight. But it has been a while since I've played this game. <laughs> I think this is the last fall, unless I win another one by some miracle. <laughs> uh, okay, I just obviously did something right. Supposed to get the ball into that thing. And I did. Uh, okay, maybe I wasn't supposed to do that. What the heck? <laughs> kind of scared me. And just as I thought that was it, so I'll put in our name. Alright, one more uh, table. We'll do the command post. Command post table up and running. Shoot back alley lanes to initiate bonus events. Good luck. You know, I have this sinking feeling that. This video is going to wind up being my longest one ever on this channel. But hey, this is a pretty major event here, this anniversary, so... You gotta do what you gotta do. Fun little level here. You know, I remember my um, aunt actually had this game on the um, on her Gateway 2000, and I actually played 
played it on her Gateway 2000 before we even had this Packard Girl, so yeah. I was already kind of familiar with this game when I first got it. And it's still one of my favorites. Sierra knew how to make a good computer game back in the day. Like this, Mixed Up Mother Goose, um, The Incredible Machine, King's Quest, Dr. Brain, and many, many others. something there. Uh, what in the world is that? Uh, we'll never know because I screwed up. I love these old um, pinball games. <laughs> That's the end of that. All right. Let's head over to um, Living Booksville. Don't think that's even a place, but who cares? I made it up. It exists. Come on. And play some just Grandma and me. By the way, um, these three um, discs that I've been showing off that I got on December 7th of 19... 1995, no, December 6th of 1995, actually, are all the original ones. So I've literally had these discs for 20 years. And the start menu, uh, I go Living Books, and just Grandma and Me. pages of this and a few pages of the Berenstain Bears. Just Grandma and Me by Mercer Mayer. Hi, I'm an 
Little Critter. Welcome to Living Book. To have the story read to you, press this button. To play inside the story, press this button. Now look at him dance. Okay. Or not. <laughs> We went to the beach. Just Grandma and me. Well, and guess what, folks? Um, just like 3D Ultra Pinball, um, I also played this on my. Ant's Gateway 2000 before we even had the Packard Bell, so yeah, another predator. Alright, gotta do my favorite part in the whole entire game. I gotta click this fence and listen to Grandma go. I can't make the noise, my I'm too sick. <laughs> Too easily amuse. Boring. Alright, let's um, jump straight to a certain particular page I want you folks to see. I think I've shown it to you before, but... I hate these fade-ins and fade-outs. If you want to play inside a certain page, click on the arrow. To right, here we go. Okay. Page 4. I think you, you may already know what's coming. <laughs> I bought hot dogs for Grandma and me. But they fell in the sand. So I washed them off. You? You. So let me explain what just happened. Um, little critter there dropped his hot dogs in the sand which was nasty enough but then he went and dunked the um, hot dogs into dirty ocean water fish urinate in that water and not to mention people urinate in that water and then he puts them back in the hot dog buns and they eat the hot dogs which are crunchy and make the sound that you would hear when you're eating a potato chip. There you go, folks. Just take with that what you will. Good, good, good. Food, food, food. Oh, yeah. Gotta love the generic um, product placement there. Always love getting my food from good, good, good food, food, food. Good, good, good. Food, food. Got it. See what I mean? The ocean's disgusting. <laughs> All right, let's head over to the Berenstain Bears now.
Do you want to quit? Okay. Okay. Also on that same day, I was given Berenstain Bears get in a fight. Here's the disc, and that's the disc going into the computer. Ooh, here we go, folks. Here we go. Head back to the living books um, menu. Berenstain Bears get in a fight, or as some people like to call it, the Berenstain Bears um, get um, rather annoyed with each other. The Berenstain Bears get in a fight by Stan and Jan Berenstain. Hi, welcome to Living Books. We are the Berenstain Bears. I'm Sister Bear. And I'm Brother Bear. This is a story about how we got into a big fight. Huh. It's also about how we made up. If you want to have the story read to you, click right here. Or if you want to play inside the story, click over here. Time for Come a... On, let's dance! Time for a hoedown! Come on! Nope. They didn't even touch her. <laughs> when two small now that was uncalled for. Don't get along. The grown-ups will. What went wrong? Um, I I blame um, I don't know. Uh, let's go. Let's blame um. The next morning, the sun rose to greet the day. Uh, and the mockingbird sang outside. I blame this um pow this um power uh, Macintosh performa for their fight. Brother Bear and because, Sister Bear would wake up. Well, I don't know. Good morning, sister. Good morning, sister. That one was for Elmo 3. <laughs> little inside joke there between the two of us. Wait a minute, we just did this. That sounded a lot like a Folgers coffee commercial, if you ask me. Alright, and just like, um, and just grim on me, there's a click point in here that always makes me laugh for no good reason. When you click this, this happens. Hey, all your radio listeners out there, you're tuned to K-Bear Radio, and it's a beautiful morning here in bear country. Ever since I was a kid, I love hearing them say, bear country. <laughs> And it's a beautiful morning here in Bear, Bear Country. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> okay, um, you know what? Um, I really hate to do this, but um We're gonna get out of this game. If you wanna have the story read to you, click right here. 
because we're going to do something kind well, of unique. are you sure you want to quit? Yes. Well, if you say so, bye. We're going to do something kind of unique. We're going to um, head over to my um, modern computer, get on Skype, and have a little chat with our good friend Video Sans Frontier where we're going to discuss um, our memories, our personal memories of our childhood computers. So stay tuned folks and we'll see if I can get the Skype recorder to work or not because I've never tried this before. So fingers crossed. Okay, we're back. Um, we were, we, we, this is actually the second time we've done this little interview because the first time, um, well, I tried to use Camtasia Studio. It worked fine at first, but then file corruption um, came into my life and it was not pretty. So we're doing it again. <laughs> and not only do we have Jay Wakefield with us, we have an Elmo 3. You got a little internet? How are you? <laughs> And, um, well, um, this is, this is, this is the, um, 20th anniversary video of the 822, guys. Big, big day. Huh? Right, definitely. Huh? Very happy to be a part of this video. I me too. Huh? Huh? Because, um, it's, this is history, folks, um, right here. One legendary machine. I mean, what a company. What a machine. The, especially when the face of technology took over. Yes, oh, yes. <laughs> and, and that good old 100 megahertz Pentium. They redeemed themselves, for sure, from past and shall we say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, once the face of technology came in, they really did start building extremely resilient computers. Yes. They did. So what we um, have decided to do is, um, you know, we've gone through this whole video um, discussing my memories of my childhood computer right here, but I thought it would be a nice idea to hang out with these two and let them um, talk about their memories of their childhood PC. So I figured, you know, let's go ahead and start with um, Jay Wakefield. Well, uh, for those of you have actually seen my channel, you'll know that my childhood PC is the Compaq Presario 2240, which is um, back here. It's a little blurry, room. but... <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry about that. <clears throat> but it is there. Now, I actually did do some notes for this. Came prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so, a wee bit about the computer act. It's, um, I mean, this computer is uh, two and a half years, years newer, thereabouts, than what Billy's Packard Bell Legend 822 is. Right. However, it did still come with Windows 95. That said, um, when we bought it, the person said that if we waited a couple of days, we could get it with Windows 98 on it. I'm really glad that we didn't do that, though, because the version of 98 that we would have gotten for it would have been 98 first edition. Yuck. Mmm. Um, and that is really not that good. <laughs> Specs of my 822? 200 megahertz. Uh, um, Jay, you... Your 822? <laughs> <laughs> is, is there something you're not telling us, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> well, Have you been hiding an 822 from Billy the Hulk? Live television, <laughs> folks. Live television. <laughs> okay. Specs of my 2240. We'll do it live. <laughs> 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 the specs of my <laughs> the specs of yeah, we, we, well that's we all never, folks <laughs> we never did speculate that this tape was going to be uh, good either but it's the one we're going with um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, well, Billy actually just collapses on camera and then, and then I make him put that in and, and then we all have a good laugh <laughs> oh that's um, going in believe me it's going in <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's going on. Anyway, the specs of my Compact Procedure 2240. <laughs> it's um, 200 megahertz AMD K62 with uh, MMX. So that's, you know, kind of the 
you know, a wee bit of something extra, a wee bit of something spicy, you know? It's, it's basically Tabasco sauce. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so it has the AMD K62 processor with Tabasco sauce on it. That's not the <laughs> that it's using, by the way. Uh, the, uh, the, the thermal grease. 32 megs of RAM, 2.1 gig hard drive, uh, 20 speed CD ROM drive, 1.44 megabyte floppy drive, JBL Pro speakers built into the chassis. Absolutely beautiful sounding speakers. I can imagine. And the big fast 56k modem. All no. oh, right. <laughs> and um, the thing is, we I mean, when we got this machine, we actually got it as a bundle. And you know, it wasn't my parents really did not walk into Staples and go backwards. <laughs> I promise you that did not happen. <laughs> and as well, we, um, you know, we got the machine. We got it with a printer, um, a photo scanner. We we actually got an HP Desk Jet 70C printer. I mean, the machine was supposed to come with a compact branded printer, but Mum really didn't want that. So <laughs> we uh, we got the we got the hit. <laughs> <laughs> the Windows 95, Internet Explorer 4.0, Active Desktop, uh, and Carta 98, Microsoft Works 4.0, um, Micro, uh, Microsoft Football, Mobile Racer, and Quicken 6. And, um, you know, we got it for homework. I mean, literally, Mum was in Staples, she asked the, um, she asked the sales assistant, look, like, she said to the sales assistant, I want this for the kids to do their homework. So really, we did not actually get anything that was for gaming at all. Right. Just not meant for gaming. Henceforth, it is one of the best DOS gaming machines I've ever used. <laughs> of course. Hey! Well, we have an S3 True uh, 32 graphics card uh, clocked at two, uh, well, with two megs of RAM. And it's, um, yeah, but it's still good, you know? And it's, um, you know, we've got bits of software that I use for that. Um, <clears throat> You know, I mean, obviously, I did do a lot of homework on that thing using Microsoft Works 4.0. Um, we did get some games. I mean, the, the whole homework thing, yeah, we did use it mostly for homework, but um, we got a game pad for it. So um, we did actually play some games on it. Um, we got written books, actually. We, we used to get PC Guide magazine. And in the summer of 1998, we actually got um, Arthur's Teacher Trouble. Wonderful game. Yeah, we all had a lot of fun with that. Um, another game that we enjoyed was Adventures with Chickens, <laughs> which was uh, it was written by um, a religious. Um, it was written by a religious software house. It was uh, they were a very Christian company who wrote the game, and you really know, like approved. You were to save chickens from space. It was you know you did get um, Bible quotes in the game, you know, kind of buried in there. But it wasn't it's like a wisdom tree game. Yeah, but it, but it wasn't anything like a wisdom tree game. <laughs> it's, it's a very very difficult game. Um, rats. The one where you got to try and gas the rats out. That you know we we did um, have a bit of fun with that. But um, one of the ones that I do remember the most is when we played Jazz Jackrabbit two in the autumn. Um, I remember we used to play that. Sometimes, you know, my, my brother would be playing and we'd all sit around and watch him and then we'd all have a shot here as well. Um, so, you know, this November, it was a cold evening, I was like, yeah, I'm going to put the 2240 on and I'm going to play some Jazz Jack Rabbit too. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but one of my, one of my favourite moments, actually, is um, when, you know, back in November 98, Mum had brought in an issue of PC Guide and it actually had on... I mean, the thing was, the previous year, um, you know, we had got the PlayStation of them and my mum used to collect official UK Sony PlayStation magazine, you know, with the yeah, demo discs and what have you. Mm -hmm. And in November 1997, they started advertising something called Net Your Owns, which was basically a... It was a demo disc. It was um, basically a way to actually create games. And <clears throat> that caught me, did that. That just kind of jumped right out at me. Because 
I was thinking, oh, I'd really love to create games, never realizing at the time you had to learn C and, you know, have a computer to actually do the development stuff on. <laughs> and the fact that I was able to, you know, just imagine what games that I would make. I even made drawings of these games. You know, I, I started um, you know, doing mock-ups of screens and that back in 1997, Christmas 97. And so when I saw this click and play disc in 1998, I was just so hysterically excited about the whole thing. But I mean, as you know, as I grew, so too did my you know uses of the machine. So <clears throat> I you know started you know started getting into music production. So you know I used a bit of Magic Magic's Music Maker and Magic's Music Studio. Um, and music jam, music maker jam to actually make music on it. And then, you know, in 2000, 2001, I started using Front Page Express to make little websites. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I did have a lot of fun with that machine, but I did used to write stories on it quite a lot. Um, and I used to, and, and I used to actually work with, uh, you know, I used to actually have a look at, um, you know, work from my mum's uh, IT course books of the day. She was taking something, a British qualification called uh, Computer Literacy and um, and Information Technology, which was, uh, yeah, quite at the time. And um, I remember once actually working through one of her quite books, actually, at the database thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, making a database about cars, like for a car dealership back in... 1999, it was May 1999 that that happened. So I really did, um, you know, I, I really did, oh, I do owe a hell of a lot to the Compact Preserio 22 for, you know, you know, partly the fact that I've done so well in school and I've went to university, got a computer and science degree. You know, I owe a lot of that to the Compact and to my parents as well, obviously. But yeah, that's that's basically you know, some of my memories of my Compact Preserio 2240. That sounds wonderful, Jay. Milestone, <laughs> milestone machine right there. Oh yeah. And, computer. and now it's time for Luke. Go on ahead, Luke. Oh boy, I'm I, I'm the awkward Mac guy in this trio. <laughs> oh boy, <clears throat> I started out back in. Probably 97 or 98. I think it was 97 that I got the computer. It was a Power Macintosh 6500 200. It was a higher end model of that lower end variety at the time. It wasn't a Performa, it was actually Power Macintosh. It was nice. Uh, it, was a, it was a nice big sort of mid tower type machine that had a floppy drive and a CD ROM drive. Ran one of the early Power PC chips, like a, I think it was, is that a 60. Uh, what were the, were the numbers? Yeah, 603, 604, one of those two. I can't remember uh, which chip it exactly was. I could look it up and find out, but mm. yeah, yeah, either here or there. It's not part of the memory that much, because I didn't know anything about CPUs back then. The only reason so, to get you a load out of uh, my compact Preserio is because I, I have that exact machine. Oh, yeah. Well, that machine ran Mac OS 8, and... That's really sort of my secondary start to computers. Before that, I used Windows 3.1 a little bit, but that was my first computer of my own to use, and I learned how to use a computer basically with Macs, both at school and at home, with that particular machine. Ignore the and Windows 98 Macs. machine in the background there. <laughs> <laughs> and with that machine came a lot of memories more in software than in hardware, at least back then. Um... 3D Ultra Pinball was a game I played a ton of back then. Me too. Well, the relatives would play me, I'd beat all of them. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I played that a ton. I played a lot of edutainment games, um, mainly because I had learning issues as a kid, and basically they would jumpstart my brain, get my brain thinking and working. And a lot of the games that would, a lot of the games that really did that for me were the math games, like Math Blaster. Um, Number Munchers early on. Uh, what else? A lot of the Ed Market games were the ones I remember the most. Like Thinking Science, Millie's Madhouse, Bailey's Book House, 
Sammy Sign's house. Games like that. And, uh, of course, um, some of the Living Books games were the ones we played at school. Uh, Arthur's Teacher Trouble was a big one. We were all, back in those days, obsessed with a paper airplane. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that paper airplane. I love the music that it played. No. Me too. We just thought it was, we just thought it was cool. Uh. Um, what else do we have? Oh, yeah. One of, the, one of the games I remember the most is jump, the Jump Start series. Jump Start Second Grade was the one I played back in the day. I used to play um, Jump Start First Grade a lot. That one I missed. I didn't do Jump Start Kindergarten either. I picked it up in second grade and played that quite a bit. Is that the one with the dog? Yeah, first grade um, is. No, the second one's the one I think with a frog? I remember. Yeah, I think, I think so. I can't remember. I can't quite remember. I'll have to find the game and play it again to figure that one out. Another game, another few of the games I remember, the Freddy Fish series. A lot of humongous oh, entertainment. Oh, Not definitely here. Them, but quite a bit of them. I know that's a big thing for Billy. Yes. Really <laughs> entertainment games. They made some great games back then. See, when I was 10 years old when we got the uh, Persona 22 party, so, um, you know, I, I mean, and I was the youngest as well, so I would have completely outgrown anything like that then. Yeah, I was like, how old was I at the time? It was 97, 98, so I was like 7, 8, 9, somewhere around there. Oh. And so I played a lot of these. Some of the Puck Puck games were in that um, range, too. But along with that came the Mac Home Magazine. Uh, CDs, which really introduced me to applications and what they were. I would find old games on there, like Ultima 3, there was a demo, there were lots of game demos, Tomb Raider 2, I think, was a game demo, and I could, couldn't figure out how to kill that, that tiger in the drum me nuts. <laughs> um, I think that, I think I played that on the machine, on a machine after I had that one. Uh, but I started out using those Mac Home CDs on that particular machine. I think iTunes 1.1 was on one of those. I still have the CD somewhere, and there will be a video on my channel about this eventually. <laughs> but, you know, there, there's a lot of oldies but goodies on there. And it just, it, it just, I just love the memories of figuring out how to use a computer and playing around with it. I feel the same and way. Especially Mac OS 8. Especially Mac OS 8.0, and how buggy it was. <laughs> I would get those bomb error messages half the time and be like, I broke it! <laughs> uh, yeah, but really, it was just a buggy <laughs> you, you were into terrorism, whereas Billy and I were just kind of uh, domestic criminals getting illegal operations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, great. 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 There's some kind of like shady stuff going on here. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> yeah, Windows 95 and 98 is like giving us illegal operations, and then Mac OS Classic's giving us a bomb. <laughs> yeah, giving the bomb errors. I, I think the one I remember the most was like an error of type 2 or something like that. <laughs> mm. I, think the, I think the only time that machine ever really quote unquote broke was when it got filled with dust. And my third grade teacher, who was a computer guy, uh, fixed that for me by blowing the dust out. <laughs> I thought he was a genius. <laughs> we, all had, we all had people like that at our school. I we didn't. Know. Know. Yeah. yeah, when um, Jim was the guy at our school, and um, he is a legend in the eyes of every Temple, Temple Bank school and alumnus. And he actually built my 2000... Please excuse me, my 2001 custom belt, which... Um, for me, at least, replaced the 2240. And that was my first own computer, if you will. Yeah. And originally, it was for like all of us to share, where Mum would use the compact Presario, you know, we, we'd use the 2001 custom belt, but eventually it, it became mine alone. And it's a good machine. Um, but, I mean, Jim built it for me, and he even kind of continued to kind of service it for me. and sorting out software, it came with Windows 98, but um, <coughs> he installed Windows 2000 for me, he replaced the floppy drive, replaced the CD drive, and then afterwards, it was, you know, it was more of a case of I wanted to you know, take repairs on myself, so I could just uh, do them. Right. Well, didn't have to bother Jim with that, but, um, you know, he, he certainly would be there to help us with our computers if we needed. Total legend. Yeah. People. I mean, they, they, they're just a lot of fun. I still remember him, Mr. Jameson. Uh. Hi. So, uh, I guess you have to be called James or some, or some, uh, variant. Yeah, something like that. Just have to have Jay in it somewhere. Yeah. 
Uh, Matt got his in 2013, too. Yeah, it was, it was quite funny because it was the year where we got new computers and got our classic ones back again. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Um, but, I mean, we were talking about uh, Zoom Beanies, actually, at, at one point. Yes. Yes, I'm glad you reminded me of that. Zoom Beanies was, a, was one of those games I'll never forget that's still fun to play today. It was an edutainment game that was basically nothing but logic puzzles. And to this day, I still can't figure some of them out, like uh. leans. I have no idea what's going on there. But even as a kid, I remember doing the frog pond level, and that sort of tweaked my sequence, the sequencing in my brain to actually work a little bit more as a kid. And, you know, edutainment was supposed to help kids that had issues with that along a little bit, and it seemed to work well for me. But along with that, it's just a fun game in general with some candid moments, like the Pete's Troll. Oh, yeah. Whatever you are, make me a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and if you played the game, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. And the, yeah, thing, exactly. the thing is, it's like, you know, sometimes I'll wake up, you know, when I wake up fresh in the morning, I, I, I feel like that pizza troll and, like, whatever you are, make me a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still need I to mean, play I, Zoom Beanies. Hey. You definitely do. It's oh, worth yeah. every minute of it. See, now, I'm on the autistic spectrum, and, you know, I do have problems with uh, logic, kind of abstract thinking, you know, kind of that. Yeah. So, and, and it's not even like it's a kiddie fight game. It's, it's just kind of <laughs> animated. And so, you know, I, I say this to everyone. You know, if, if you've got a child on the spectrum, you can actually get it now on Steam. So it's something that I would definitely recommend doing, because, and, and I, I will be playing it. I, I need to really kind of play it. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to install it to my Compact Armada E500, actually, play it on there. There you go. Yeah. The nicest part about Zoom Beanies is, again, it's not kidified. It's not like it's a bunch of minions running around making odd noises. Oh, good it's grief. It's a bunch of blue guys running around making odd noises. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you have a bridge who... And then, and then here's my favorite part. You have a bridge that ejects ponytail people off of <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I did a Luke's computer the other day. Yeah, I did that one, so I was just like, it's Jay playing this or a buy? What's going on here? Yeah, I'm, I'm inside your computer controlling what it does. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the morning, he'll, he'll wake up and it'll be running Windows 98 into the IV. He party. I'm a compact now. <laughs> Oh, man, but I liked my, I liked my Core i5. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I really hate to do this, but it's about time to wind things up. But um, before we do, I want to... Um, Luke reminded me of something a minute ago uh, about... He was talking about learning how to do all this um, power stuff on computers when we were kids. Well, mm -hmm. 
I kind of did the same thing um, when I was about six years old, I guess around 1996 or so with the um, Legend 822. Um, in fact, I'll show it on camera right now. Um, I was, I just, I just taught myself how to do this, and um, and, it, and it's the simplest thing. But at the time, um, for a six-year-old, and with a fairly new operating system like Windows 95, it was pretty amazing. Um, I actually figured out how to modify certain things in the Start menu by just um, right-clicking the Start menu itself, clicking on Open, and here you are. You can just go in and view the program files like you would a regular folder. And I remember um, my dad happened to be looking at me while I was doing this and he thought that was so amazing um, that because he didn't know about this either and he was just thinking, wow, Billy, that's pretty cool you figured that out. <laughs> so I... So, <laughs> Uh, so you go to change it. Actually, that's something. That's something else I remember. Every time, every time I went on the computer, you could set your watch by it. Man, can you go in the compact? All uh, right. Yeah, yeah, you can. But don't go changing any defaults. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, really glad that um, you actually got here an A22 back into your life. I mean, those are absolutely brilliant machines. Yes. Fantastic. And difficult to find, it seems, in the original configuration you had yours, because if I'm not mistaken, you have a second one with a completely different motherboard. Yep, here it is down here. I promise you, I have no A22s at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, sure. <laughs> that, oh, yeah, I forgot about that earlier. But, I mean, I, I, I will say this just before I, I do sign off and let Luke uh, take over. It's actually been really quite nice, you know, having this wee juicy uh, conversation about our computer memories and just and just kind of going back to the past and to thinking about the stuff that we did with our first computers. I know, um, yeah. You know, while we did some things very similarly, we did some things very differently. It's like, you know, I, you know, I played Jazz Jackrabbit, and you were playing Firefight and getting scared off by that bar caster. Oh, good grief, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Forecaster. <laughs> Luke was being wrestled to the ground by his Hydra on Team Raider 2 while I was trying to figure out how such a game might even run on, on the Presario 2240. <laughs> I don't know why, I could never get games to run on that when... You know, when, when we were younger, we just couldn't do it. But now it's just like, oh, there we go. It's running. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I just put the desk in and it ran. Well, well with age comes knowledge. Uh, exactly. Uh. I guess so. So we... Well, well, all I can say about the 822 is it's... <clears throat> I've said a lot in some videos over the years. I guess I'll just say that I like Pentiums. If you see one, you should use one and put Windows 95 on it and play games on it. Yeah, <laughs> you, you pretty much summed it up. It's, it's kind of simplistic advice, but just do it. Yeah. <laughs> pretty soon, I'm going to be getting a Pentium from Luke with Tabasco sauce on it. <laughs> well, I'll see if I have it in the fridge, you know. <laughs> Get the Compact Desk Pro 2000. It's got Pentium with Tabasco sauce. <laughs> I believe it's Pentium 166 MMX, so that would be a nice machine to have around. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm going to be doing some stuff with that. I might use that to experiment with Voodoo. And I know that is High Treason 610 disapproved. Eh, what? Eh. I doubt he really cares that much, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like he's going to come round to your house and um, and knock you in the head with something. Well, like his kid with that booty guard. <laughs> Well, I, I would hope that um, if I even wants to watch one of my videos one day, he, he uh, sees me working on a, an old compact, and then, he, and then he thinks I should maybe get one of these a go, and, and then he gets one and is very happy with it. One can dream, anyway. Well, um, I'll go ahead and um, say some final words um, to close up this video. Um, this is since I'm doing this with a camera, I wasn't able to do this on the last iteration of this scene. Um, 
get my Diet Dr. Pepper out of the way. Um, well, here we are. Tw again, 20 years. 20 years. I know this isn't the original, original 822, but you know what? It might as well be. Um, <laughs> it might as well be, folks, because it's pretty much the same thing. And, you know, I've had so many good times with this 822 and the original one combined that I think I gotta say that this is pretty much the best computer I've ever used in my life. It's you know, it's been quite sad that um, we both now own com our first computers were made by companies that while they still exist the name, they're just not the same anymore. It's Compact a shame. In a hand basket back in 2001, and Patrick Bell, well, that, that went to NEC in 1997 and then to Acer in 2009. Yes. And it's like modern day Patrick Bell, so they're not really that good. At the same time, though, having them sort of be stuck in time like that gives them a bit of charm. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I suppose, but it does it does make me very sad that Compaq has gone from being one of the best companies who makes some of the most resilient, desirable machines to making sense. They're still there, but they're just not as strong. Yeah. Uh, I would say that the modern day Compacts are basically the sort of thing that you would, um, they're basically equivalent to finding a pavement pizza. <laughs> I think, you, I think you all know what I'm talking about there. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. basically just the point of sick. I know because I've worked on so many. <laughs> well, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and shut the um, Packard Bell down for the night. And um, we'll be seeing much more of this Packard Bell, um, especially the next couple of weeks with uh, my Nostalgic Christmas series. i got a few... Um, Let's Plays um, I have in mind for this computer, so um, that will be quite enjoyable. So, um, yeah, um, again, happy birthday to the greatest computer I've ever used. This is Billy Core signing off on the night of August. Uh, not August, I'm too tired. I'm <laughs> yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> on... December the 7th of the year 2015. Good night, everybody.